introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Maya and I'm eight years old and I've just met the wonderful Dr. Sarah. <laughs> and um, today I was at the Black Girl Festival and we were on a panel talking about our life with Wow, and what was the take home message from the panel? Um, give plus. Yes, awesome, high five. Wow, you are a smooth talker. She and she's smooth. got a little beautiful people welcome back to my channel thank you so much for clicking on another video you are officially invited to come to black girl fest with me a festival celebrating black women in the uk and i'm super excited i was invited to go down and speak on the nhsbt panel about blood donation and sickle cell i'm not gonna lie i'm running late it is quarter to ten on saturday the day of the event the event has started but my panel isn't until two but i need to be there at one and my eta is now four past one and i need to find parking because i did not book a train or a bus I've literally decided to drive down to central London and find parking on the day which wasn't my best idea I had planned to wake up super early but with my new routine of never getting less than seven hours sleep that wasn't possible I literally have my breakfast to go right now I've got my iced coffee because I can't seem to find my hot coffee container and a bacon <laughs> a bacon egg lettuce I think it's like rocket leaves cream cheese sandwich in a literal plate because that is how rushed this is so without further ado we're gonna go and see what black girl fest is saying i'm so excited because the stories on their instagram are lit all these talented black women lining up their art their clothing i thought i was going to talk apparently i'm going to shop i need so many of those items that they're going to be promoting and selling there oh my goodness i'm super excited let's go <laughs> we are here we have arrived in Shoreditch. I think that's where we are. I've arrived at the event. I've somehow, by God's grace, literally God's blessing, managed to find parking like just two streets away from the event. And it's free. It's free on a Saturday. Do my eyebrows look a little overdone? They do look a little overdone, don't they? So yeah, my makeup is done. I'm wearing possibly one of the most boring outfits I own. So I think this is it. Shortest. My name is Scarlett Douglas, I'm hosting this chair today uh, and I'm very excited to be here, I'm really privileged to be asked to be able to attend this um, with some incredible ladies that I've met to. So we have got a good lineup for you all. We'll start on this side, we've got Lisa Phillips, who is Maya's mother. Uh, you may have seen Maya on a little video that's been circulating with the hand puppet Emma, talking about sickle cell anemia. Cool, we'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, then moving over here, we've got Sadia, Sadia Yusuf, Davinia, Davinia, Calavero, is that right? Caballero. Caballero, yeah. Oh, Mary Edith Rivo. Mary Edith Rivo, I had to make sure I got the same surname right earlier. So, this panel is very diverse and they all have different stories, we're going to talk about that. Um, I actually wanted to start with you, Maya, and talk about the video you did that was so cute. How was it? Did you enjoy it? Change everything. 
constantly fussing me like, is she drunk in my water? Is she warm enough? Have I left home with painkillers? So moving over, um, Sadia, you were born to say well. Yes. yes. So tell me how your journey was. And also, I know you haven't seen um, a blog exactly on it. Did you find it really hard or did your pain just kind of flow along with it? Um, yeah, so I was born with sickle cell and kind of just, um, the, obviously the pain is a big issue, but also dealing with like friends and school and work and just the community in general. And you found out when you were four, which is quite funny because my aunt has sickle cell, but okay. the fact that there's not much knowledge about it back then in the 80s, they do not they would say that I had the same illness. I first realised how serious sickle cell was probably at the age of 15 when I had a crisis in my and they decided that they wanted to remove it. Me being a 15 year old, let go of I had an operation, far too young. As I get older, I'll see how it goes. Um, got to the age of 22, was five months pregnant, had a really bad crisis in my legs and back. Um, my spleen started to play up again, had another crisis. Um, and from what I was told, um, the spleen took all the blood, so the same was in Kapkit in me, and I had a miscarriage for five months. After that, um, I realised it's like that guy is all up one day, couldn't see anything, um, just see little bits, nothing floating all about, went to Google what to do. 2016, um, May, my kidneys fell, um, and I spent 14 months on dialysis. Thankfully, my brother was a match, and last year he gave me a um, And so it's been so frightening, so scary, but it didn't end there. Two weeks ago, I found out that I'm facing more objections to kidney, and they gave me a course of steroids which caused them all over the crisis. This was like three weeks ago, and I haven't had a crisis for over a year now. So it was a shock to me. I actually was screaming <laughs> because the pain was so bad. No, I will come to you. I just want to head over to you. Obviously, you are a doctor, aren't you? Um, so kind of tell me your experience of it and how you have to create awareness and if you've ever experienced with staff the same sort of thing that we experience. Um, so me personally, I've got members of my own family with sickle cell disease, but growing up it, was, it wasn't really a thing between someone having the disease and what the rest of us can do about it, you kind of just carry on with life. Um, so I think my first real kind of hit of the relevancy of the disease was when I was on placement before I was a medical student and um, shadowing a consultant uh, in Atlanta Children's Hospital in, in the place in Thomas Guys. And um, I saw so much, it was an amazing placement. And we went to the consultant's office, we were chatting, and then I saw um, a funeral card of, of a young girl, she's really pretty, beautiful little black girl. And then I just asked him, oh, what happened with that? This was before I was a doctor, so I wasn't used to experiencing tragedy in that way or hearing about it. And then he said that was one of his patients with sickle cell, who unfortunately uh, passed away from one of the complications, which is stroke. And it just hit me. I was like, oh, you mean my relative with that is, is going through that kind of risk? And I'm kind of not, it's not at the forefront of my, my mind. Um, so I carried on, I got into med school, I was studying, um, and I was studying in Birmingham, so if you're wondering where my accent is from, I'm, <laughs> I'm basically Cardiff. Yeah. I studied in Birmingham, and there's uh, quite a few more black people there, and Cardiff um, <laughs> <laughs> was a bit scarce. Um, but I was on the thalassemia and sickle cell ward, so I got to do a lot of um, work with patients there and kind of seeing what they were going through. And, and studying more into the illness. So, so for me, um, raising awareness has been important because of my own lack of awareness. Like as a medical professional, as the relative of someone with it, and yet still with my head in the sand, I was like, this isn't right. Um, so yeah, that's kind of, for me, why I'm passionate about it and want to speak about it more. Absolutely, the most glamorous stuff I've ever seen. Sister after me. Okay. <laughs> 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 
just get a bit of information into your mind. So sickle cell disease is the most common inherited genetic disorder in the UK. The disease is usually found in people of African heritage in 20, sorry, in 90% of British patients, although it's also found in those from the Caribbean, Middle Eastern and Mediterranean backgrounds. So that's one of the reasons why we urge you to sign up 40,000 black blood donors. Um, also, patients needing regular blood transfusions need more precisely matched blood, so that's why ethnicity plays a big role. So most sickle cell patients are of African and Caribbean descent, which is why we need a lot more African and Caribbean descent donors to help match the blood. Now this one, so the RO phenotype is what we need obviously later to know about this. It's a type of, um, it's a phenotype, it's a blood subtype in our blood. So I don't know if everyone knows what their blood type is. I gave blood last year for the first time, and that's the only time I actually knew what it was. Um, but it's basically a part of the blood that can help those that have sickle cell anemia, and it's more likely found within Black, African, and Caribbean blood types. So that's why, again, it's really, really important. Um, and also, very interesting, one donation can save up to three lives, but it can be split up into three components. You have plasma, you have um, the red blood cells, and you have platelets. Um, if you don't want to give the full blood on plasma, you can just do paper payments as well, which is, uh, I think it takes a bit longer, is that what happens? Yeah, but it's still an option. Um, and the whole thing from going in, signing up, giving blood, coming back out, getting your biscuit and your uh, Rabina, only really takes about an hour. Um, and for me, it feels like a blood test, you just sat there for quite a bit longer. Um, so I just want to quickly talk about the reason why I got into this um, and I've teamed up with NHS Give Blood. Um, years ago, I lost my auntie to six anemia, and I didn't really know anything about it. Uh, when I was 21, which was 10 years, no, not when I was 21, when my brother was 21, I was 14 at the time, he was stabbed by a burglar and lost a lot of blood. Um, he didn't have six anemia, but he did have 48 pints of blood transfused through his body, he had six blood transfusions. Um, and I never really knew about giving blood. I don't think it's something that we spoke about in the family. Um, I feel like it's something that maybe within white families have spoken about a lot more. I've got quite a few white friends and they were like, yeah, we spoke about it every Christmas and we've got to sign up for it. We never really spoke about it. Um, and it was kind of years after, uh, I did a lot of musical theatre and I dance, I do eight shows a week and I'm like, oh, I can't give blood, I'm going to be tired or I can't do that show. So I found excuses to not give blood. And when I really stopped and looked into it and found out more and, and met with the NHS team, I realised <coughs> that there is a lot that I'm not aware about, especially when it comes to sickle cell. Maybe it's not that we just don't want to do it, because sometimes people say, oh, oh, I'm scared of needles, or, you know, like, we don't give up. Maybe we just don't know about it. And I think that's why this is really important, is that we just don't know, because so many people signed up to do it, that actually it is important that we make an awareness. Um, and I mean, Sarah, obviously, again, you come from the medical world. What would you say are the real world effects of not having enough blood donors from the black community? From the medical side? it's important to give someone the best treatment. We, we always have this idea, I think even I had this idea as a student, that things kind of just sort themselves, on, themselves out in medicine. Like, you're sick, you go to the doctor, they fix you. That happens because someone did something to make it happen. If no one gives blood, there is no blood. If black people aren't donating blood, there is not a match for my That's how real it is. There's no kind of like, Blood doesn't grow on trees in that sense. And we, sometimes we detach what we treat people with from, from where it comes from. They are beautiful. They'll be hanging up in my bedroom. I'm so excited. Thank you. Look at these. Amazing artwork that I had to buy. Didn't plan to spend much money today. Is that vegan as well? Yeah, it's awesome. So this is the stall with the mastermind who shan't be filmed. Shan't be filmed because she doesn't want to be in the vlog. But she's a mastermind putting all this together and does so much work. So there's a little stall where you can basically sign up to find out your blood type. Um, so they're doing literal tests right here. And you can find out your blood type, which is pretty cool. 
Hey guys, so I am currently sat out in the one park that I could find. I have done the panel at Black Girl Fest and it was amazing, especially to meet some of you guys. <laughs> to meet some of you guys is like, I can't, like, it makes me feel weird. I don't know, I don't know, it makes me feel really happy, but like, it's just the most incredible, amazing thing. So thanks to everyone who said hi, it was awesome to meet you. I didn't get pictures with everyone because so I was like just in a different space. But if you have any pictures, please tag me in them and send me them because that will make my heart very happy. I did get some beautiful artwork, which I can't wait to put up at home. Like, look at that. Look at this queen. That's gonna look so good on my wall. I think that event was so, so good and so necessary to raise awareness. I really just feel like more stuff like that is needed and I'm so glad to have been a part of that. So I encourage you to go and sign up to Donate Blood. You can easily do it by checking any of the websites which I will put in the description box or like here somewhere. Um, sign up, go and give blood and change life. You don't need no medical degree. You don't need a nursing degree to save a life. You can do it by the blood running through your veins right now. I feel humbled to have met such strong women who are going through life with sickle cell disease and fighting through crisis and coming out and being badass like that and doing panels like this I feel super proud my heart is full and I I was honored to sit among them I'm so grateful to NHSBT for having me here any of the panels you want me to do just let me know Black Girl Fest is awesome so awesome so much talent there like I almost lost all my money walking through those stores so many beautiful designs and pieces jewelry good food really good food um, but yeah that's it from me today thank you so much for watching I will see you guys in my next video bye